Mike Shanahan spoke once again about his time here with the Washington Redskins, which, of course, did not end well. Lasted four seasons, did make it to the playoffs in year two, and that was it. Um, and that was you know, an amazing year. But he talked about the fact that they had a chance to bring in Peyton Manning and that it was really actually close. And you wonder what would have happened. I remember talking about that at the time. Yeah, I wonder what would have happened had they landed Peyton Manning. I'll tell you what would have happened. They would have made the playoffs every year. Uh, remember, I remember having those debates on the show, and I remember specifically saying I would sign Peyton Manning and his noodle arm. Go, yeah. to, go, to, the, go to the tapes. I remember we debated it. We, it, it was uh, leaked that they were talking to each other, and I remember saying we had that debate, right? Would you rather – would you rather sign noodle armed Peyton Manning or go all in on RG3 or Andrew Luck? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think I remember at that time saying, I'll take the noodle armed Peyton Manning for a couple of years. I think I was going to him I, coming. I, I think, think it, I, people yeah. knew he was like reduced. He wasn't the same Peyton Manning. But he yeah. was. His prime. Aren't but you he was. Guys, it, it was unknown because he was coming yeah. off the, the neck surgeries. I guess he had ultimately four neck surgeries. So it was unknown what he was going to be like, but no, we figured that he would he be weaker. The, he didn't have the noodle arm really until the last season. Yeah, because correct, but I mean, we but we called him a noodle arm because remember he said it felt like a noodle. Right. Yeah. So if you go back to that time, I mean, he came out of an, he he came out of the season off, joined the Broncos, and was right back to MVP status. Took him to Super Bowl exactly. in year two. Had 55 touchdowns in a season. Right. Um, so how would it have changed the trajectory of the Redskins? Well, even if they had drafted RG3, so he decided, I guess, well, they wouldn't to, to move on because I think, I think maybe the free agency or his, his – when he was negotiating with teams, his period of time happened after they had already drafted RG3. So he was interested. He says that he liked Kyle – was really like the offense. He already knew Mike from a Pro Bowl prior. Yeah. But the fact that they had drafted RG3, he wasn't interested. That may not have Which, been the absolute deciding factor because he liked John Elway and he decided to go to Denver. But apparently the drafting of RG3 was a big factor. But even in, in my mind, let's say he just said, okay, they drafted RG3, I'm going to go there. If he's having MVP seasons, RG3 is just sitting on the bench. Yeah, but they wouldn't – again, they, w they wouldn't have drafted him. They wouldn't have wasted that capital on, on a backup. Yeah, probably not. They're not at number just two. Have. Yeah, they just it w that wasn't going to happen. It was an either-or proposition. And remember, now I don't know – I know that Shani a year or two into this started to paint this as – it was a Snyder pick. I never wanted RG3. <laughs> I'll, I'll, be I'll believe it. I mean, what do I know? But um, that would give more credence to, to Shani's argument that he really did want – uh, Peyton instead, you know. Yeah. Well, I completely believe out. he would have rather had Peyton than, than roll the dice with, with RG3. Yeah. yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. We well, dude, it's, it's he didn't not want RG3. History. I mean, he drafted another quarterback in the fourth round. <laughs> right. Drabby, you could go to the tape, and Valdez can. I mean, I know you don't care, but he, they, we talked about his noodle arm before. You're, you're, you might be right. Yeah. Yeah, because there's like a Bob Kravitz, Kravitz story here in the Indy Star about it. Yeah, yeah, because he said something about, you know, like, you know, he didn't have feeling in it or whatever. And it felt right. like a wet noodle or something. But let's not act like Peyton wasn't silly for about two and a half, three years when he, he came was. Back. He was. He was. Yeah, That's why I was to, pro signing. I mean, I think the Broncos were the highest scoring offense of all time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they went to two Super Bowls. No, they had more, <laughs> they had more uh, talent around them, I'm sure. Um, was I it, was, was snoozing it, on his 2013 season until I just picked, until I just pulled up the stats. I didn't he throw like 50 touchdowns? I'd forgotten either 55. Yeah, 55. yeah. That's pretty good. I slept on that. It's not yeah. bad for a noodle. He just fell off a he, cliff. Now he liked he just, calling his you know he called his own plays and he liked calling pass plays on first and goal from the one a lot during that season. Hey, who cares? But he converted them into touchdowns. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I think our first Throwback Thursday clip should be when EB asks Archie Manning about. Peyton's noodle arm. Ah. Well, I don't, I don't that remember before. that. <laughs> he definitely happened. Yeah. Yeah. No, he got I, better. I, I oh, I'm it. sure he well, did. Well, that's what I learned about the Manning pride. 
That, that is. What legendary. was his reaction? I can't remember. He said, I, I, he said, I, could try and he said I think he said it gets there, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I think you said. Why, it. I think you said, Archie, why does your son throw so many wobblers or something yes. like that? It wasn't about the noodle. It was just about that he doesn't throw silly tight spirals. And I maintain that way before he lost feeling in his arm. Yeah. I mean, I just he just always was one of those guys that didn't throw a silly spiral. Didn't mean he wasn't a great. It was just a little needle. Well, I and think he I, does throw the silly spiral sometimes, but sometimes. I, I want to say that Archie said sometimes if you're trying to get the ball out quick, you don't get a great grip, but you get it there. Sure. Yeah, but I'm kind of, well, I'm Bill Polian said the same thing. I'm kind of a spiral snob. I want I that ball. Too. I want I like that guys ball. that can spin oh, it. So, so you'd rather have Jeff George than Peyton Manning? Well, I'd rather maybe well, I'd have, Jeff, I'd have Aaron Rodgers. Nice I maybe do like, I like a pretty ball. I like a good-looking ball in the air. Right. I like a Drew Brees. <laughs> Drew Brees doesn't throw those I wobblers. Think, I think Peyton threw plenty of pretty balls. Just he threw a lot of wobblers, dude. Wobblers. He very much reminded me of Billy Kilmer. He was a better bi- Billy Kilmer. Billy Kilmer was notorious for his yeah. wobblers. <laughs> now, I can play the old man thing. If you, if you don't play it for about Billy yeah, Kilmer. He was 100 reference. times better than Billy Kilmer. Searching for your Archie Manning. The uh, only way it'd be older uh, is if you reference Sammy Baugh. You've never <laughs> seen him play. <laughs> Maybe a grainy enough, black and white. I'm old anyway, enough to one remember hope, Billy Kilmer. Right. One would hope that me. one would hope that the current Redskins, with their coach-centric approach, with Ron Rivera running his show, don't have similar situations where it seems the owner is pushing the drafting of a player like they did with RG3, versus letting the coach in Mike Shanahan, who seemed to favor going after Peyton Manning. Right. Let the guys who are making the football decisions pick the football players. Generally, well, that's why they're a dumpster run. fire. That's why they've <laughs> right. been a dumpster I, fire since, I agree. since he bought the team. Sure. But do we think it's going to change? Do we think it's legitimately going to change here with Ron Rivera? You um, would have to hope so. You, you'd have to, I mean, Dan Snyder's Change in what way? Well, meaning that Ron Rivera gets to call Will the they shots, get better? Not just for a year or two, yeah. but during his entire run. And that Dan stays out of it. That they, we well, don't have hope situations so. that we don't hear whispers that Dan wanted to draft this player, but Ron Rivera wanted that player. That Dan wanted to do this, and Ron wanted to do something else. I have else. to think that after 20-plus years of catastrophic failure, he has to look to others to help him out of the hole that he's dug for the franchise. So I think maybe he, he acquiesces to Ron Rivera. You'd have to hope he does. Otherwise, they're going to be losers for 30-plus years while he owns the team.